Good afternoon and welcome to this 31st Foundation Day of CCNB. Uh, my special uh, gratitude and welcome to uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan for accepting to come to CCNB and inspire us uh, from what he has done and what this space program means to this country. And I'm sure you will enjoy uh, what he's going to say. And therefore, it's a good strategy for me to speak first, otherwise, you will not be interested in what I'm going to say. Uh, space is always very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to tell you a uh, little bit about CCMB and what we have, uh, uh, a part of what we have done in uh, past one year, uh, in next about half an hour. So, CCMB was uh, dedicated to the nation and to the cause of science in 87 with a mission to conduct research in the frontiers and multidisciplinary areas of modern biology and seek potential application of this work. Today's talk I want to dedicate to Dr. Laji Singh, former director of CCMB, whom we last about 10, about 11 months ago. Laji was a man uh, who left a strong imprint on the history and achievements of CCMB during the period when he was in CCMB. He was a remarkable institution builder. Uh, his uh, uh, expertise and the technology of the finger fingerprinting that he developed led to the establishment of CDFB, which is an independent institution next door now. He uh, discovered the universal primer technology that is used in Lacon, which is a specialized lab of CCMB for wildlife. Uh, conservation and provide services to various uh, departments including forest, customs and so on. When there was an threat scare in the country, he responded to it and whatever the government wanted, he took the initiative and set up this uh, CRR, uh, uh, which now we are using as a innovation hub of CCMB. It was a really uh, wonderful thing to have. In addition to this, Nali made many things in, in, in CCMB like R&D building where many of our labs are located, extension of hostel, major building of the lab and so on. It's lots of those things. He was also made a phenomenal contribution to science. The history of Indian population, genomics approaches to healthcare are, are coming out from his work which actually described how the Indian subcontinent was populated, how people reach from Africa to Andaman and so on. And a proud man and devoted scientist in the service of this. So CCM is very proud of his contributions, which is a source of inspiration and courage to accept challenges. With that, we will go back to uh, what CCM does. So our research is organized into few kind of groups. Uh, of activities, we can broadly say cell biology, structural biology, infectious diseases, developmental biology, genomics and epigenomics, and ecology and wildlife conservation. So these are our core research areas. And then we have this innovation hub where we have our incubation center, our innovation set which interact with industry and the skill development uh, uh, activity operating from there. We also carry out social and societal uh, relevance, uh, research of societal relevance, which is DNA based diagnostics, crop technology, wildlife forensic, and all these activities in fact feed each other. We get research uh, worthy material from these activities and uh, we get challenging issues from these activities, and of course, that's our main source of uh, research activity. Uh, CCMB is its people. So we have uh, about 62 scientists organized in 46 research groups, 109 technical staff, 117 support staff, administrative staff, and we have uh, uh, strong 160 PhD students who are the main backbone uh, uh, of this institution, science. Then postdoctoral fellows, project personnel, consultants, etc. Then we have contract workers, 218 number, very important component of our functioning. And of course, we have 
we are heavily guided and supported by large number of well wishers, extended family members, retired staff, and more importantly, they were asked to very, very supportive of what we do and uh, convey our feeling to the places where it matters. As I mentioned, we, uh, PhD program is our major research activity and we, last year we had admitted 21 students, 7 have completed their PhD and currently we have 160. So far CCM has produced around 350 PhDs and we are very proud to say that 120 of them are in leading research, pro are leading research programs in central universities, institutes like ISC, ISCs, ISER and number of CSI and DPT national laboratories. About 56 of them have positions in the industry or have their own enterprises and about half of our students stay back. Uh, broad, they are involved in various uh, uh, PDF academic and industry positions. Uh, this year we had uh, uh, included two, uh, three research groups, new research groups. Sonal Jaisavan, whose uh, research area is developmental neurobiology using Prosophila family as a model system. Santosh Kumar, whose research area interest is immunology. And Megha uh, Kumar, whose area of research is cell and developmental biology using Zebra as a model system. So these people not only bring uh, uh, fresh ideas, fresh uh, blood, they also bring expertise of the modern system which then is used by many of us uh, already there. We have uh, three other important people, professionals support new initiatives, Tonga Sakarak as a role of outreach and science communications officer, Surubi Srivastava as a role of skill development and research manager, and Divya Singh who will be the IP and business development officer. These are the new initiatives that CCMB has taken and we were doing it in temporary way or the makeshift manner now with professional will take care of these activities. Uh, now I am going to just give you a few highlights of the research. It is very difficult to cover the research of 50 research, uh, uh, activity of 50 research group in a short time and many of those things are so specialized that uh, you may expose. So uh, one of the major activities in CCMB, I am going to talk about Dr. Sankar Narayan's uh, 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 finding during this year, which is quality control in protein synthesis. When the protein is made in the in the cells, which means by translating the mRNA into proteins, there are lots of confusion, lots of amyloses are floating around, how to pick the correct one, to put on the correct trans, uh, tRNA so that the correct protein is made, is actually very challenging task which cells do effortlessly. So, uh, his lab had discovered some time back that protein called DDD actually discriminates between uh, uh, chirality of the amino acids and prefers L and removes the D amino acid that is why we get the protein that we want. And the recent discovery shows that DTD has an additional role up to feeding in when putting uh, the wrong amino acid is charged on a wrong tRNA. This also puts a problem of uh, uh, how then the middle thing of the correct amino acid is uh, from the TRN is not removed. So the discovery which this publication brings is that there is a surveillance system that ensures the correct amino acid uh, choice on the TRN and it is achieved from this thing called discriminator base. So if it is uh, correctly charged, the protein knows that it is talking to this TRN and it protects and transcends it for protein translation or cell wall sensitivity or bacteria. And this is the district chemical code is an anti determinant for DT reaction. So it's a very important discovery. Uh, continuing on the same theme, they also discovered another protein which is a mechanistic variant of DTD for proof reading of tRNA mischarging. And so if there is a mischarging of tRNA, for instance, on a red tRNA, raw, green amino acid is charged, this will be taken out and uh, edited so that the uh, wrong amino acid doesn't find the place following the <coughs> And this is a 
are the first and the only known proofreading factor which corrects PRNA's ambiguity. Then move to uh, uh, Dr. Jyotna Damas' finding uh, which published this year, which is about the muscle stem cells. So stem cells are very important in the body. All the time our body is going through various tears and these stem cells are repairing constantly and replacing the old or uh, uh, damaged cells. So these, they are involved in regeneration, healing, aging muscle changes, uh, their efficiency goes down and of course there are lots of diseases that are known uh, related to uh, the cells. So what this discovery shows is that the, the, the satellite cells or the stem cells in the muscle, they start to proliferate in response to a signal. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about the name. When this signal is working, this protein will talk to beta catenin and drive the expression of set of genes which will mean that the cell will proliferate. Okay. And the same protein, that is LEP1, will change partner, shake hand now with something else called SMAT3 and then make this cell sit quiet and become a stem cell so that when next time it is required, it will be available. So as you can imagine that you are talking about ordering a cell to start dividing and make the tissue or become quiet and, and uh, become a reserve when it is required, then you call for it. So modulation of this uh, uh, signaling pathway as shown in the study can potentially provide solution to the muscle related diseases for which in this publication itself they showed there are several chemicals that can actually specifically modulate these pathways. Uh, then I will tell you uh, some work from our lab which is when a cell divides how does it know that it has to become another same kind of cell. Uh, this is a nucleus it has to go through these kinds of fragmented independent chromosomes and then if it were within the liver cell this has to make two liver cells back and not something else. So what is, how a cell maintains identity during process called mitosis? What is the structural basis of this so-called cellular memory? As you know, if this memory is lost, the cell will have only two ways. One is either it will become cancer or it will die. Both are not acceptable for normal uh, tissue. So what we did was we looked at the, uh, the external constituents of nucleus and of mitotic chromosomes and we realized that actually the features of interphase nuclear architectures are retained in the mitotic chromosome and they are probably the seeds from which the, the next uh, interphase will, uh, will grow. So they are providing the structural basis of the cellular memory. Now this opens us because these are large number of proteins, they give us a handle now to address this question in more specific uh, manner. This is the work of uh, uh, Dr. Tangaj, which talks about the reconstructing the demographic history of the Himalayan and adjoining population. So there is a Tangaj style to do things in a, in a big way. So he collected samples of large number of people, 800 of them, and used mainly from 16 ethnic groups of these uh, uh, Himalayan regions. And the finding shows that there is distinct genetic lines across the trans Himalayan populations and it's likely originated due to their own novel genetic components and admixed at a different proportion with East and South Asian populations. Uh, I thought I will uh, pose this question that uh, this study which drives us to, uh, uh, to think of the, uh, this kind of problem that simple sequence repeats in the genome make twice as much a com uh, of the DNA as the entire component of or the coding component of the genome. So for what we are collecting so much of things which is just repetitive and boring otherwise. To answer this question, what we did was this. So this what you are seeing is actually plotting of the data. And this data is 501 possible sequence uh, motifs of simple sequence repeats and these are different kinds of animals you don't have to read but these are vertebrates, these are invertebrates, so on and so forth, these are plants, these are unicellular and so on. And then there are 700, so these are the 719 different organisms grouped in different uh, classes. 
and you have here 685 million data points plotted based on their intensity, whether they are absent or they are present. So what it shows actually is that you see a pattern, first that itself means that there is a purpose in these uh, uh, simple sequence repeats, otherwise you should have seen a mixture of uh, fuzzy sets of dots without any structure. What this structure shows is that, for example, these groups of uh, organisms do not like any of the repeat. Red means it is absent. They don't like repeat at all up to here, but then after this, these kinds of repeat they like to have. So there is one group of uh, organisms, they don't like repeat at all. So, as you see, vertebrates have one pattern, universities have another pattern, and so on, and these are plants, so they have another pattern. Some repeats are liked by all, <coughs> except a few. Most important thing is that you see there, you see that there are black little lines, which means these are sequences highly present only here, they are absent everywhere else. These are giving you signature of that group of animals or, or, or the, uh, the species. So what this shows is that these repeats have been selectively enriched and retained under positive selection pressure and there are species specific or group specific signatures which means we can speculate based on these that indicates that direct involvement of these elements in speciation. We have already shown that these sequences actually play important role in regulating an organic genome. Now I am going to tell you uh, what major projects that have been supported by CSIR because in past couple of years we have gone through a new kind of system in which projects are evaluated at a team level or CSIR level and uh, uh, some of them are supported. So there are three categories of projects. One is called mission mode projects which CCMB has two of these projects. One is CCMB is leading which is a sickle cell anemia mission which is led by Dr. Chandra and then we have nanobiosensors and microfluidics uh, for healthcare. Here we are participating lab. It is actually led by Siri Bilani and we have a set of experts from CCMB who are uh, leading this project of CCMB component. Then there are something called fast track translational projects. These are projects that are supposed to lead to some uh, uh, some uh, societal uh, application at the end of one or two years. So this one is the male fertility diagnostic kit which is uh, handled by uh, Tangraj. In fact, we are the lead and CDRI is participating in this. And we have uh, another activity about our RISE program which is to upscale the high yielding uh, Sava Maturi mutant line SM93. I will talk to you about this line in, in a bit. And it's led by Jay Patel. And the development of novel DNA based identification system for plants. This is something very important. This is one FCT, but we are putting more focus on this. We want to have a technology uh, soon by which any piece of plant you give and we will tell which species or which uh, plant it is. So, in all our food, all the medicinal, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, medicine that are uh, plant produced, we can tell which plant source it is. It will have lots of uh, implications and uh, Life coaching agencies want that. There is another kind of project called niche creation projects. We have three of them. One is uh, uh, in, in my group with regulatory elements and evolution of complexities about homeotic genes, how they regulate body axis, and then one about mechanistic and functional role of chiral proof leading uh, uh, Tunker's project, and then Tanga's uh, genomics and epigenetics in health and disease. And we have uh, uh, we focused basic research projects. So it's not that CSR doesn't support basic research. This is an evidence. One is towards the productive development of rice using mutants that have traits of economic importance. Again, uh, same detail. And epomixis technologies for increasing agricultural production. Very important project led by Imran. And then mechanistic insights into bacterial cell growth, manual this project. So these are the uh, uh, projects which are funded by CISA, uh, I mean in a uh, project mode. We are in CCMD known for